trillion in new debt during the 11th, 111th Congress. That's not only more than any other Congress in history, it's more than the first 100 U.S. Congresses combined. So can the new Congress being sworn in next week stop this tidal wave of spending? Let's ask Republican Congressman Michael Burgess of Texas, Texas who's also a medical doctor. Good to see you, Congressman. Thanks for being here. David, always good to be with you. Well, let's start with Obamacare, since we're, uh, we're talking to a medical doctor, and a lot of those expenses haven't even accrued yet. Uh, is that going to be the real budget buster here? I know the budget's already busted, but are you more worried about that than anything else? Well, well, look, here's the, the real tragedy in those numbers that you, you put forward at the, at the top of the segment. We didn't even get anything for all of that investment. The return on, on investment was, was pitiful. We didn't get infrastructure. We didn't get new schools. Did we get jobs? I don't think so. So we spent all this money, and we've got nothing to show for it. Now, when the Debt Commission came forward with their recommendation a couple of weeks ago, there was a lot of criticism because it wasn't more widely embraced. But one of the reasons, quite frankly, that I was very skeptical was because they did not address this massive new entitlement, and I'm talking about the subsidies and the exchanges that are going to occur in Obamacare in 2014. If you're not willing to tackle that, if that has somehow been set off limits to the, uh, to the debt reduction panel, then let's face it, this whole thing was an exercise in futility. We've got to get a handle on this spending. It does threaten the very fabric of our republic. Well, and there's another thing we don't talk about when we're just talking dollars and cents, which is the transfer of wealth from the private sector to the public sector. A lot of things that are being done much more efficiently and inexpensively in the private sector, when the government takes over those responsibilities, the costs go way up and the consumer pays. Not only does the taxpayer pay the price, but the consumer of that good or service pays the price. Well, and I think you, you touched on that in your last segment with the, the fact that if FedEx had been responsible for snow removal, uh, perhaps it would all be picked up today. Um, I can't really speak to that because in Texas we don't have that type of weather, thank goodness. <laughs> you have your own problems with global warming, we have ours, uh, but snow is not one of them. Look, there's no question the private sector can do and should do more of what the government has taken over recently, and we see that in, in, in all sorts of areas, but certainly health care is... In, in my world is, is, is front and center. So what and should you do, forgive is, me, Congressman, but what should you yeah. and the rest of the 112th Congress do to get all this spending under control? Because you still don't have the Senate, and of course you still don't have the executive. Well, to show leadership on the House side, and I think that it's going to be critical. We've talked about bringing spending back to 2008 levels. I'd go further, 2007 or 2006. No one accused us of spending too much or too little money in 2006, if I recall correctly. So bring the spending levels, do an additional across the board, one, one and a half percent cut for discretionary spending, and recognize that that is just a stopgap measure to kind of stem the hemorrhage, and then you've got to get serious about what's happening with entitlement spending. And if we're not serious about doing that, then we're not serious about solving the problem. And if we're not serious about solving the problem, again, I submit the very future of our republic is, is at stake. By the way, we got to run, but uh, are doctors dropping out of health care, at least administering to people that are paid by the government, and namely uh, Medicare users? Medicare has taken some, some serious hits. This was the worst year ever for America's doctors who were reimbursed under the Medicare system. 2010 will go down as a, a year in, in infamy. Um, it may have gotten a little bit better right at the end of the year, but it's clearly a, it's a system that itself is on life support, and anyone who is moving and just a new Medicare patient and now moves and changes location to be closer to their kids, they will find it's very, very difficult to find a doctor in, in that new location who now will accept their Medicare. Representative and medical doctor Michael Burgess, great to see you, sir. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate Good to see it. You,